Good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, Geert. Good morning, Steve. Um, give me one second. I just need to get the fan on. It's getting nice and warm here again. Hello, Alex. Right, okay. So the fan should help. Phew. Hello Christopher, hello Jet Power, morning guys. Um, we've got the two front runners there ready to go already. A couple of other guys here. So anyway, I'm, I'm almost ready to go. I'm going to start my APU, so I'll be ready to push in a minute or two. Um, Hope you guys are going to enjoy the flight with us. Something's eating my memory again. I'm just restarting SDKP quickly as well. Make sure that we clear out whatever is hogging that memory. Restore the flight, yes. Connect. There we go. So, Porto Traffic, Skymatic 001 uh, will commence uh, pushback after company traffic passes behind us, uh, Dix 028. John Pierre, um, morning, a tough week with the flu, shame man. Sorry to hear that, getting better, that's always a good sign. Alex, uh, when I picked the aircraft this morning, um, I honestly missed the fact that I picked my test version. I didn't, I didn't pick my normal production version of the Zebra because when I updated last night to zero three, um, you know, I, I did my my checking up in this one. So it's lack of the draw, lack of concentration. Luck of the draw, lack of concentration, better way of saying it. So, one of those things. Right. Just want to make sure that no one else pushes. And I want to push now because I forgot to call my truck. Oh, yeah, another thing. Uh, it's not the APU actually. <laughs> Christopher, next flight she'll be back. Don't worry. Shame the poor girl needs a break as well. You know, we we run her into the ground here with all the testing and stuff. You know, so we must get tired sometime and just have a wee rest. Here to wait for a radio check. Radio 55. Very clear. Radio 5 Yes, Christopher. Oh, it's nice to be back home. Morning, Neil. Welcome. Okay, 
Okay, I want one pushing back. Uh, uh, share that reach out. Okay, I one. Oh, sorry, I can't push back. Hey, Lori. Morning. I'm almost out of here, Erwin. Just dang tight. Auto traffic schematic 078, texting to approach runway 35. Uh, schematic 001, taxi holding point Charlie uh, for intersection takeoff runway 35. Parece que se arregla del otro lado, boludo. ¡Para! ¡Para! para! ¡Qué manco, hijo de puta, boludo! No, oh, that was an easy server mute over there.
It's not really old school. It's just a mechanical keyboard. I prefer to have a mechanical keyboard. Um, I like the sound, to be honest. Ooh, Agent B7, no worries, no worries, just stick to the jump seat, I'll do the flying, you just relax, you know, if you need to sleep, and go take one of the seats in the back, kick back, relax. Morning, Paul. And with all that excitement, let's come at zero zero one, line up and wait, uh, runway three five, uh, Porto. I did not keep track of when my buddy took off here, so I'm gonna give it another bash. Three, See. Five. Morning, Rob. Runway three, five. Okay, I just want to quickly uh, check where I have far the previous traffic is, and then I'll judge and go because I obviously did not take. Note, damn it. John Pierre, my magenta line works. Probably you need to reinstall Zebo. Move that one out the way, make a new one. Um, all right, way by. We said way by. This is Go Traffic Sky Note 465, taxiing to runway 35, holding point Bravo, following KLM. Skymatic 001 taking off runway 35 Porto. This wind, eh? I don't know if you all will get the same, but I'm getting like 14 knots there from about 10 o'clock. It was crazy. Right, gear up. 400.
Yeah, guys, when you get a funny with the Zebo, you know, just move the old one out the way, start fresh, full base, and then the latest fix solves most of the problems, I promise. It's such a quick, a quick and easy fix. So it takes two minutes out of your life and problem goes away. Yeah? Most most of the times, 95% of the times, if not more. Scotsman, there are winds and there are winds. I know Scottish winds are worse than South African winds or Portuguese winds, but we get, we'll get there. Now it's 33. It's getting there. <laughs> um, Rob, I haven't noticed a drop in FPS. Um, I've seen one or two guys report that, but my answer is again. Get rid of the old ones, start fresh, see if it fix it. Then we then we can go investigate because I, I haven't noticed it. But my biggest drawback when it comes to FPS or any display stuff is remember I'm on AMD, so I don't know if there's a NVIDIA driver problem or you know, I, I wouldn't know. It's kind of taken out of my hands. So unless Paul or McTrying or Uncle John or one of the, you other guys, you know countless other guys come up with it, I don't know. Auto traffic schematic 078, taking off runway 35. Oh my goodness, ah, oh, B7, yeah, that, that'll be spectacular. I must actually try to remember that, go try it. That's sun. Morning, Greta. Things are pretty good. It's the last time I've been with the vertical speed. It was still strange when climbing up. Yeah, uh, that's uh, in in my esteemed and humble opinion. Opinion. Uh, that's uh, explain weather story. If you switch explain weather off, we use a different weather engine. I don't see any other reports at all, and I don't get it. You can check my vertical speed. I'm using X Enviro. It, it's like that weather really, really seriously needs a kick in the butt and a fix, man. Okay. 
So, let's see, reinstall it, my Genta line is back, yeah, yeah, told you, told you, it's a quick and easy fix, um, anyway, good morning to all the new names and new faces, it's nice to have you guys here, we are more Wolf, um, yeah, Christo, that's your choice, um, I'm happy with XN Viro, um, I, I can't complain about it, and my performance is not as bad as some of the people have reported, so I'm okay. Yeah, winds m might be stable, we don't know about the turbulence, I mean you don't get any turbulence okay, indication. Um, one of the things, uh, it's been a while actually, um, that Zebo noticed was that there was a lot of barometric pressure differences in one of my streams and he actually asked me about it and uh, you know, so uh, I don't know man, I don't have the tools to analyze it really behind the scenes. Twixter's got some fancy way of finding things out. Um, but that's not my department, eh? And then obviously Zebo's got the same, but... Yeah. Let's go traffic, SkyMatic 465 lining up on runway 35. Let's go traffic. Sun. I look outside again when the sun changes a bit, or we need to look in a different angle or direction. Tommy, Kais and Uncle John. Good morning guys, thanks for joining here. What's up Uncle John? Good morning, sir. What's up? Uh, no, what's up with the bill? Oh no. I saw you down here, I'm the old load suit, so I popped down. Hundred percent. Agent B7, it's a couple of things, okay? It is, first of all, remember I'm using AMD graphics, so that changes the color quite a bit. Then I'm using X-Enviro, which has got some other shader effect on the whole story. And um, then we also have this IRS weirdness that um, laminar put in there. So I'm not sure where it comes from, but it, it's a combination of all of those things that obviously give me my display and the sun seems to be out of our eyes at this moment so that's terrible Scotsman morning Stephen
You're right, you're not wrong at all, B7. You're not wrong at all. Um, Traffic, Skymatic 465, departing from runway 35, which is Sky Traffic. Yep. Rico? Yeah, he stopped me. Is it possible that you can uh, stream on Discord? Yes, it is. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay. Mamado, good morning. Let me sit here to see, but when I enter my waypoint, it doesn't work. If you go to the Lex page and you type any, let's just take Z, M, R, if you put a waypoint in there, and you enter it, obviously it's the same one. Let's just take, um, hell, I don't know what waypoint would be close by here. Let me really see if I can see something. What's that? Clear of runway 35, passing 2000 for level 190, last call. Right, you see what I did there? Let me show you. Right, so that's where we are, and I found that waypoint over there. And all I do is I type it in as it's spelt, and I go put it where I want it. So from Adoro, it's going to go 90, just over 90 degrees to the right to get there. Now, we don't want that, so I'm just going to erase it. But that's how easy it is to put in waypoints. If you've got the correct spelling, and you um, will sometimes have to choose from a list of waypoints or VORs or something, you know, usually VORs. You just got to put it in the right way. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem putting it in. So I'm not sure what you do or don't do, but that's the way it works. And you have to do it in the next page. Okay, B7, sleep well. Shame. Yeah, I don't, don't. Don't push yourself too hard, man. Go, go relax. So, Mama, I don't know if that answers your question, but I mean, you clearly saw me do it, you know. There you go. In the cockpit for two minutes. All right. Let's see, Netos, this is it, should be able to, yep, there you go, there it is. If I wanted to actually be in there, I can just execute it, but in my instance, I'm just going to remove it. Ah, uh, Ryan, I didn't actually see that it's you posting that. I was just reading the con uh, content of the comment. Yes, of course. But anyway, now I showed him that as well. So, well, okay, Mama Do. First of all, do you have a Navigraph subscription? Is your nav data up to date? I mean, you can't link to a waypoint that doesn't exist. If the aircraft doesn't recognize a waypoint because it's not in the database, I can understand that. So Navigraph needs to be updated. The Zebo mod needs to be updated. The waypoint needs to physically exist in the aircraft as well as in the sim for it to actually work. Of course, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. When Sasso comes in here yeah, and he needs to make a quick plan, that's his go to. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't know. If it works for me, it must work for you. 
The the other thing, and I mean we've had this discussion on Discord this morning as well. So you guys must remember that in the Zebo folder, let's go go there. I'll show you in the Zebo folder. In the Zebo folder, you have a whole bunch of navigational files. Okay, those files get created. It's a combination of Navigraph and Explain data that goes in there. If those things are not up to date, the best thing to do is just delete them, restart your, or you have to do the delete when the, the Explain isn't running anyway. Then delete it, then start to Explain, then go to the Zebo mod. It will then rescan the scenery, it will rescan Explain, rescan Navigraph, and it will build new nav database. So maybe you can just do that. Delete those ones. Just let the Zebo build new ones. You know, that's current in your, in your explain because sometimes those things, you know, are not current. Try that. Maybe that will help you. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you need to make sure that your nav data is in the correct uh, date range. Thanks, Ryan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, okay, okay. Eight, nine, ten. There you go. Double figures again, Nico. Nice. Thank you, Uncle John. Uncle John. Yes, sir. I made my coffee in my big jug again. Okay. But this time I didn't put the lid on. And? Now it's not burning me that much. Damn it. This was this was harsh yesterday. It burnt me a bit. And it's very hot. It was very hot. Trying to work out what 465 is doing. Where do you see that? What, what do you mean what he's doing? The direction he's flying. How, how is he taken off? Has he got the opposite runway or something? I'm trying to find him. If you look near departures, he's aiming at the moment northwest. Wait, on the ground or in the air? In the air, but if you look at um, ACAS, ACAS, uh. yeah, that's David. On web eye, he's already turning in east. No, 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 465 is RT. 
Um, that's on ACOS. Yeah, I don't see him on Iveo, sir. He's not. He's not connected to Iveo. Uh, okay. We lost a few guys there all of a sudden. Yes, Ryan. Um, it's it's part of my job, obviously. I need to be able to do my job effectively, and the five screens really helps with that, day. If you give me a minute or so, I just messed some of the coffee out here on top of me. <laughs> just want to quickly clean up, then I'll show you a photo. Computer admin. Well, if you can get by on one screen, why not? My my issue comes in. I start my mornings on two servers and at least one workstation in the morning. And depending on how many I have in the workshop, I don't go and stand at the workbench and work on systems. I can have four, six, eight machines on the workbench here, and they each get their little any desk um, session. And then I just flip through screens and I sit here with my coffee and I don't spill on myself every day. This was a fluke. You know, and I put my feet up some days and I just sit back and relax and do my job. He's forever spilling coffee, he dribbles. Uncle John, you know. No, I don't know what I did. It was just in the no way I moved or something. This thing is obviously very full, you know, it's, it's full to the brim. So, yeah. So. I'm gonna have to buy you one of those special straws, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, thank goodness I don't have a, a thousand servers to worry about. <laughs> ah, anyway. Anyway, um, just a silly, on a silly note, I don't know, just two servers, I've got plenty more, but what I was talking about is obviously just the workload that I put onto myself here, so. There we go, and then we start distributing the workload, and it's easier, way easier to just open and close little windows on a screen than it is to actually get up and walk to a machine or drive to a machine. It just helps.
Stephen. As he said, it's just computers that fit into a rack. We've got um, rack mount as well as standalone servers. We've got servers in the cloud. I mean, we've got quite a few um, customers using Office 365 with SharePoint and things like that. So it all depends. We've got the server is just a place where all the the central information is kept. That's all. Well, you can be a server to your children or your grandchildren because they come to you centrally and get knowledge. Um, same idea, it's just same principle. The only difference is um, one's hardware and one is you as a person, man. But it's the same idea. It's just where the knowledge is stored, where people go to define knowledge. And to make, uh, you know, to, to do things. You know, you, you make your dad play taxi for you, you know, kids come, dad, need to go to this, there, all over the place. So you give the server tasks, you give it stuff to do. <laughs> no, my coffee's got milk and sugar in it. Life is better enough, man. I like my coffee. Sweet and white. Me, currently, I'm drinking some Dutch coffee. It's called Dou Egberts. That's the brand. We've got Nestle. We've got all kinds of different stuff here in the house. But I think the two, two nicer ones are... It's some other Nestle thing and then this Dou Egberts. I prefer Dou Egberts. The rest of the family drink the other stuff. So. Well, the Dow Achberts come in many different flavors. Um, the Kenya, Kenya kind of stuff. Uh, all the, the dark, the rich, the light. It's, you just pick which one you want. Morning, Gilbert. We are more. Looks like David's bringing the rear up, Nico. Fantastic. Yeah, right now I've got a mixture of uh, Linux and Windows servers and um, all our telephone servers are Linux. We don't use any form of Windows when it comes to telephony. It's all Linux based. When we look at our backup servers, all the mission critical stuff we run on Linux. The, the Windows is just a nice to have to make it easy for the users. But um, all our mission critical stuff is all Linux. And there we've got the whole range of different ones.
Exactly, Ryan. Exactly. No, we don't do that. I remember a couple of years ago one of our internet service providers here tried to offer Windows hosting and to come to think of it that just one day disappeared I don't know anybody that um, runs Windows for a web server at all, I don't know such a person that just all fizzled away Alex, when I set up Linux I usually use Ubuntu server if it is something that I get from a supplier it can be CentOS or something else um, there's different ones and on my laptop I use Mint um, well, it all depends where it comes from who, who made the requirements you know so I'll have to go check if we have any red that service. I, I wouldn't know offhand, I don't know. <laughs> IBM's full. Yeah. Morning, Sergei Lambda. Lamba, how are you? Yeah, we're not responsible for the HUD. We just use the HUD. So if you have any comments regarding that, you need to come to Discord and speak to the actual guy who makes it. Come speak to the developer, then you can give him some points and tips and all those things. I gave up on OpenSense a while ago, eh, Alex? I had one customer, he was adamant. All his systems had to run OpenSense, all his routers. He put me onto a supplier that made hardware devices. Everything was OpenSense. And um, I either use Mikrotech or I use... Um, they've changed their name now. What the hell did they change their name to now? It used to be called Untangle. Because some of my customers are NPOs, non-profit organizations, you know, they can't spend lots of money on uh, very expensive payware stuff and all. So we standardize on on this other one, um, Untangled, it was free. And I mean, it's good enough for what we want. And um, No, let me put it, let me tell you what happened to me. The OpenSense, at the time that we had to choose 
promise you, um, it was it was ten million times more complicated than any of the other ones. Even the Mikritic one, I found more logical and more easy to use. I gave up on on the open sense one. I know, I know, I know very well, but I gave up on it. You know, I don't know how the evolution has been in the last, let's say, eight years or so, but. Back in the day, it was, ah, oh, no, yuck, uh -uh, couldn't handle it. Maybe one day I'll look at it again. Yes, yeah, I remember BF Sense. Um, Sonic, oh my goodness, I've heard the name before, never worked on that. Okay, yesterday I said, my. Gilbert just trying to recalibrate it, man. I don't know what I mean. What happened there? Just check it. But if you've got CFY um, questions, remember Zebo uses CFY himself as well. You know, take it to the forum. Ask Zebo. Ask him directly. Tag him. Say to him, Zebo, what now? What's the story? Because I, I'm not familiar with CFY at all. Yeah, okay, but Gilbert, it's better to speak to Zibo directly. All I'm going to do is say ooh and ah and have sympathy with you, but because I'm not familiar with it, I'm not going to be of much use to you, my friend, unfortunately. Exactly, Alex, exactly, exactly. When you're working against time and clock and the customer says to you, you know, we've got a thousand bucks what can you do for us and you know for a fact it's going to take two thousand bucks to do you know and you kind of skip things and it's not worth it morning dave right guys i think it's time for a coffee break let's uh, go get more coffee and all those things and we'll be back in like five or so minutes because i mean it's still a, a way to go so by the time i get back i can do my descent preparations and all i appreciate it gilbert i'm just being honest with you i i do appreciate the feedback but um I'm just being honest, it's it's Zebo that's got the power to do something about it. Thank you, Ryan. Sleep well. Okay, gents, I'll be back.
And I'm back. Hope you guys got your coffee. You said that they can. Okay. Yeah, I'm on my way then now. What's that? There's 98 nautical miles to go. Pressure, eh? Yeah, 0992, wow. And thank you, Jet Power, for your comment. And we've got 900 to lose. Okay, we've got a 24 knot wind on the nose and a 4 knot crosswind, gentlemen. So I would highly recommend do not just use wind correction of plus 5. Add another couple in there so that you don't lose your speed there on finals. Eh? Good idea. Right, go around altitude will be 3,000. Okay. We're going to descend to 2,000. There we go, I'm set for the dis descent. Very cool. Yes, sir. Shouldn't we add the four, the five uh, at the FMC speed? Um, I suppose you can, but um, that is obviously if you're going to use the automation, you know, all the way down. The problem comes in once your speed window goes open and you are relying on this thing to tell you you know um, then it's going to be off so what i do is i'll rather add five knots you know mentally and then just make sure that when i look there it's going to be 144 plus 10 instead of just five you know so i'll have it like 154 155 just to make sure i've got margin okay so okay. that's depending on the strong headwind yes yeah the thing is if you if you start messing with this thing here um you might lose 
the sense of where you should be. And the moment that speed window goes open here at the top, um, it can happen very easily. So it's easier to just leave it at there and then just adjust it here. Now, but I mean, it's up to you. I don't think okay. either way is wrong, Tommy. Okay, thank you very much, Nick. Tommy, yes. for your benefit and for the viewers, okay, I just want to remind you guys, because we've got gusting, it's 24 gusting 35, the normal way of calculating the value that you add, okay, is half the headwind component plus the gust factor to a maximum of 15 knots, okay, so half, now just click off of it, Half of the 24 is 12, okay? And then it's 11. The gust factor is 11. Now, you can't add 11 plus 12. You can only go to a maximum of 15, okay? Me, in my head, I just quickly calculated it and I said I'm going to use 10, okay? But if we actually employ the rule of thumb that is generally used we're probably going to have to add 15 knots because that's maximum that you can add okay so half the headwind component plus the gust factor okay and it's just changed there's a new meter just published so it's 27 gusting 41 so half of 27 is 13 and a half already and then you've got 14 knots gusting which means now the, the, the components that we're talking about, let me actually put it on screen here so you can follow it easier. Uh, let me just quickly put it here on the score as well for you, Tommy. Give me a second. Thanks. All right, then I'm going to stop sharing it. This one, I'm going to bring this thing across. All right, so. Uh, uh, yeah. There you go, display capture. Right, so we are now talking, see this meter just updated. So we've got a 13 knot side wind and 24 knots from the, the front, okay? We look at 27 gusting 43. Half of 27 is 13 and a half, and the difference there is 14 knots. But you can't have 13 plus 14, because then you go over the design limits. I think, I've, I actually have it in my training checklist as being 20 knot as the maximum, but Sasso said they only use 15 as the maximum. So in, in this instance, if you actually calculate it proper, I would say add 15. Right, so when we look at the VREF, it's 144 plus 15, so it's 159. It's going to be our actual approach speed. hope that makes sense. That's if we actually employ proper mathematics and we don't just sit and guess or do a quick mental arithmetic. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That would be Thank you. Yeah. So this will be interesting. I'd love to see what happens when we get there. You know, are we going to use 10 or are we going to use 15? Theoretically, it should be 15. Okay, you're in front of me, so I will see what we do. 100%. Yes, Uncle John? 
be careful on the descent. It's not calculating correctly the descent rate. Uh -huh. high. Oh, that's why you pull the speed brake, sir. You got it. Yeah. I'll keep an eye on that. It's probably using common v nav and running parallel then. Top of descent is coming up. Thank you, Steve. Enjoy your day, man. Good luck. Ah, oh, Stephen, there you go. That's the difference. Stephen has just explained it, Tommy. I don't know if you can read this message there in YouTube, but it's just to explain it. That makes perfect sense. Um, Sasha must have mentioned it, I just forgot, but you were, I mean, it's brilliant, thank you. Yes, I could read his uh, okay. information on the YouTube that All these little tidbits makes us clever, eh? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Every day. We got tower online. Ooh. It's a right way around way two four and hours. Yes. Uncle John? Oh, he's probably talking to Darwin now. I just wanted to say we've got 11 guys online flying now, so 
A map B. That's really nice. That's good. Mm. Another thing, Nico, when I look at the weather briefing for extra wire, mm -hmm. if I put steam brief, I know you, you got a lot of uh, wind, different winds there. Mm -hmm. I got nothing. Did you put your steam brief name at the top? Look at my screen. Okay, I understand that the steam brief name should be. Yes, top. Okay. because this and is how you it. retrieve it. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Good morning, Magnus. Long time. Are you doing well? Are you okay? Nice to see you on stream again. Tommy? Tommy? Yeah, all good, thank you. <coughs> I believe the same. <coughs> I'm really busy, man. Sorry, Nick, I was away from the keyboard. Mm, no problem, I figured this much. I wanted to know, are you going left of the island or right of the island? In your approach. Let me see. Oh, 
I'm going right to the island. Okay. South of the island. Gotcha. Diamond, this is X Plane 12, Zebra Mod. Information Charlie, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, it would have updated with that update in the meter. Yeah, that's absolutely nice weather for VFR, eh? Yeah, if you, if you put a bit of effort in the explain, you can make it look real good. And with auto also, it's becoming, you know, really cool, really nice. on the right of the island so um, I'll keep my speed up a bit for you there okay I noticed that thank you, thank you. I'll try my best to keep the speed up but I'm coming in after you isn't I 
you, you should be, and because you're going to the right, you should be even further behind me. But I just don't want to create a problem for you, so I'll just keep an eye on it. You know, on okay. the situation. Okay, thank you very much. Ooh, approach is online. Approach, good morning, Skymatic 001. Skymatic 001, hello, 0 Okay, uh, guys, that was like three transmissions over each other. Can you give approach a chance, please? Schematic Cedar, Cedar 1, radar contact, Community descent 6,000 feet, unit 9. Can you hear me, Kayla 171? Kayla 171, standby, please. Schematic Cedar, Cedar 1, continue descent 6,000 feet, unit 9, 9, 2. 6,000 feet, QNH 992, Schematic 001. Schematic 078, you are with me. Yes, could you please text, please? Good morning, Steve. Galen 171, Squawk 1000, 1000. Okay, I'm on some ones, Quark 1000. I was not able to hear you. Uh, I can hear you clear now, Kayla I'm on some one. Roger. Kayla I'm on some one on the VAR route 3 November arrival for the ILS Zulu runway 24. Request uh, clearance to uh, runway 24, Kayla I'm on some one. Got 101, continue on 3 November, runway 24. And continue descent flight level 80. Flight level 80, okay, Lamont 171. Medic 001, flight direct uh, Air Mut, um, descent 4000. Dar direct Air Mut and 4000 feet, command 001. Okay, Lamont 001, Command X001, descend altitude 2000 feet. 
Descending 2,000 feet, schematic set out of the way. Go left and 171, turn left heading 0 05, zero. Turning left 0 05, zero, okay, left 171. One after that mode, you are clear for the ILS of the approach, from way 2, 4, and the ILS on the glacier, high speed approved. High speed approved, and after armament, we cleared for the uh, intercept of the ILS for runway 2, 4. We'll report established schematic 001. Ooh, ooh, interesting. Calam 171, continue to send out the 2,000 feet, units 9 and Sorry, Uncle John. Share it. I'm sharing it. What? Uh, what am I not sharing? Can you repeat flight level, please? Oh no, this ATC and all now, all of a sudden, we've got approach on now. We're getting vectors to the ILS. Really nice. Yeah. Automatic 459er, hello sir, send the arrival, banner 3 November, to run with 24. Galen one seven one, turn right, heading one eight zero. Turning right one eight zero, okay, no one seven one. Radio altimeter. Commanding four five nine nine, one possible for one thousand. Now it's set a squawk, squawk one thousand, one zero zero zero. No problem. Day 0013 uh, Tower, 118 uh, decimal 5. Scan match 001, repeat. Let me try again, so sorry about that. Now, Schematic 001, we on a 5.5 mile final runway 24 on the ILS. Look at the wind. Make it so clear to land runway to four. Schematic zero zero one. 
thousand feet, stabilize and just convert channel to the set. Time on check zero two eight. Taxi by a gate one two stand two eight. Yeah, it's nice seeing it in there. Taxi by a gate one stand two eight. Come back here to eight. Tower, speedjet 122, request taxi to holding pong, but wait to fall. Is it the casting and all? Uh, Nothing to push, speedjet 122. Speedjet 122, taxi Fortune by uh, gate 2. And tango 2, holding point, echo 2, one to fall. Wow. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh, that wasn't too bad at the end, but man, you had to hang on, eh? That was really cool. Whatever, we didn't even need that speed break. Look how quick we stopped. Hey, Rank. Let's come at X001 runway vacated. Why is he not hearing me again? Stupid. Let's come at X001 runway vacated. My PTT didn't work. Uh, can you please repeat that for me? Come at X001 taxi via gate 1 and tango to stand 2 feet. Stand T6, VR Gate 1 and Tango Schematic 001. Tango 2, Hello, Nico. Hope taxiing now. Scanner J04, with Unicom, wanted to decimalize by. Why does my scenery numbers work like this? I suppose we just have to count up, obviously. <laughs> just all of a sudden it looked weird.
Kayla 121, request uh, landing on runway 24, Kayla 121. Kayla 121, wind 270 with 41 of the 270 of the ground, runway 2. Clear to land runway 24, Kayla 121. Schematic 001 on the blocks, thank you for your service sir, much appreciated, have a good day, Schematic 001. Schematic 001 by and Unicom, to the my bike. Unicom, Schematic 001. Owen's runway is in a different place than our runway. Right, let's see how we can just do that. That was flipping amazing. Thank you everybody for watching and enjoying it with me and, and all the other flyers and everybody. Thank you, this was really cool. really nice. Who's next? Tommy. Good luck, Tommy. Thank you, sir. After Tommy, we have three more flyers that's coming in. Here's one already. It's getting a nice shortcut from the approach controller. And we've got Reggie, David, ooh, and I see there, way at the back, we've got Anthony as well, but it's gonna take a while for him to get here. Continues the last one, isn't it? Yes. On oh, no, way, yeah, yes.
What a crab. Wow, look at that. Nice. Nice. Good job, Tommy. Yes, well done. Thank you, sir. That wind is tough. Look how it missed Robert around as he started his takeoff roll there. That wind's tough, man. You got to roll into it and kick that rudder opposite so you know you're going to stay on the center line. Otherwise, it's going to miss you around. Right, so I'm not sure what the sequence would be. We've got uh, Dave coming in first, but then, the, I don't know, we'll have to see the the rest between David and Reggie because Reggie's gone wide, eh? Morning. 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 Hello. Captain, passengers are asking for a cozier temperature. That wind is not your play, mate. Uh, you've got to really, really, really know how to fly it. Well, 
Well done, Dave. Good recovery there. All right, now we've got Reggie, and then behind him we've got David. And depending on Anthony's speed, he looks like he's catching up. We might actually see him land as well. <laughs> it was a landing, Steve. It was a landing, man. <laughs> we could walk away from it. I tell you, this wind was was a trick. There you go, that is a nice landing. Landed like a pro. Mm. Passengers are asking Looks like he's done it before. I can't see David, he's somewhere in that direction, but it looks like he's too far for visuals. So. Ah, there he is. He's just popped into you.
Tommy, are you still there? Tommy? Is Nico, I'm here. Uh, it was Case looking for you. Okay, thank you. Jeez, uh, I'm here. Hey, Tommy, was it you that having the problems with the rudder pedals? No, that was not me. Okay, thank you. to move around about a bit after that landing. Mm -hmm. That wind, man, that wind plays with you. Yeah, really. Well, Anthony is about to turn uh, to base, so... We might as well wait for him then as well. Somewhere I'm chatting with Microsoft support, so I probably have all the time of the world. Okay. Magnus? Ah, there he comes. There he's in view as well. So it looks like we're going to see him land, and that's the rear guard there. At least for Iveo. Check all those. Uh, lines as the guys were evicted. That's cool. Welcome, David. are asking for a cozier temperature.
Welcome, Anthony. Nice landing. Yeah, that was that was really excellent. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with Anthony. So we lost two guys that did not wait for the photo. Thank you everybody for flying with, everybody watching, um, all the ATC guys, thank you very much. It was lovely having you guys here. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday and we'll speak to you probably tomorrow. And I mean, if something happens tonight and I can fly, we'll try, but otherwise tomorrow morning and, um, you know, we'll, we'll chat again. Have fun, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Nico. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nico. Bye. All right.